Well, hi again, everybody, and as always, welcome to high school basketball here on a Tuesday evening in Maria Stein. We have the Marion Local Flyers taking on the Wapak Canetta Redskins here in a non-league action on WOSN. My name's John Zerbe, and beside me tonight is Mark Shine, as always. And Mark, we have a non-league action tonight between two pretty good teams trying to catch up on games after a successful football season. Well, John, I think that's a really interesting way to put it because it's a Tuesday game that wasn't originally scheduled, but because of football, they had to stick it in here tonight. One of the reasons the crowd may not be as, as good as they would like is both teams have their girls' teams playing on the road tonight. So that might cut into our crowd a little bit, but I think playing a game right now, you're coming out of Christmas, let's get back and get into the school routine, the basketball routine, before you start league play again on Friday night. Well, and this is an unusual thing to be playing this many games, but this is <laughs> not this is new not new for Marion Local. They've done this quite a bit with the success that they've had during the football season. How is it to try to cram all these games in here early in the season? Well, you know, Coach Guttermiller, he, he's a master at it because he had to do it so many times. They're just coming off winning that Salina tournament just a few days ago, and they're back on the floor tonight. They're going to play 10 games in the month of December, which I think is obviously very cramped in your schedule, but that frees up their February, and then they can play, you know, more of a, of a normal pace and then be prepared for the tournament without being fatigued out. All right, Mark, let's take a look at some keys to the game tonight. I know that both these teams want to get off to a good start, especially after the Christmas break, but let's go ahead and start with Walpock and, and look at some keys for them tonight. Well, if you look at what the Redskins do successfully, they control the basketball, they don't take bad shots, but they shoot a lot of three-point field goals, which they are very adept at, and they shoot free throws very, very well. So the question is, are they able to do those three things against a very sticky defense that comes from the Marion Local Flyers? They're not a tall team like Marion Local is, so they have to rebound inside and then uh, obviously control um, what, what Marion Local wants to do inside with their offense by playing solid defense, and part of that's not turning the basketball over, of course. And let's take a look at the keys for the Marion Local Flyers. You know, we said earlier, they're getting off to a good start here early in the season. What's it going to take for them to be successful tonight? Well, Coach Gunnar Miller's team always defends very well. They're giving up just 38 points a game on the season. But this is a Wapak Tanet team that will have very lengthy possessions. We did a game that Marion Local, or that Wapak had earlier in the season, Ottawa Glandorf. They ran a minute off the clock on their very first possession. So you have to sit down and guard and not lull yourself to sleep defensively against that type of, of a defensive scheme. And I think Coach also wants to get uh, some easy baskets inside and get a lot of good play out of his bench. When you're playing this many games in this short a time period, you can't go with five or six. You need a lot of guys to contribute for you. All right, very good. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for Walpock tonight. They're going to start a six-foot guard and number three, Zach Niekamp. At four to six-foot one-inch uh, junior, number five, Nate Metzger. In the, at the four position, a six foot five inch senior, Jackson Quarter. At the other guard position, a six foot one inch junior, Cash Shadel. And inside, a six foot seven inch center, a senior, Deacon Redder. Let's switch over to the Marion Local Flyers tonight. They have a big lineup here and a very experienced group. A senior, six foot two inch, number uh, 11, Jaden Mesher. Quarterback from the football team, six foot two inch senior, number 12, Tate Hess. At uh, in the middle there, it's six foot one inch senior number fifteen, Braden Eink. Here's a couple twin towers here, Mark. Yeah. At sophomore number twenty three, Austin Neekamp at six foot eight inches, and at six foot nine, a, six, uh, a junior number thirty three, Jack Knapke. It's going to be an interesting game tonight. It's Walpaw Canetta and Marion Local, and it's coming next right here on WOSN. And welcome back here to Marion Local High School, where we once again have non-league action tonight between the Wapak and Redskins and the Marion Local Flyers. Getting ready here for the tip tonight, Mark. Can you give us the officials' names for All tonight? All right, Clay Ehrman, Paul Wingowitz, and Michael McGue will toss in the center circle. We're underway. Three pretty good officials tonight, yes, and sir. the tip will go to Marion Local, and immediately they're going to get out here and try to get in their offense. Looking inside. It's Tate Hess now with the ball, quarterback of the football team, moving things around. He's got the ball to Brandon Eink. Once again, moving it to Hess. John, in an era where nobody uses the low post anymore, <laughs> the Flyers will move two guys in there. Kanapke and Niekamp kind of alternate down in the low box. Well, I don't know of too many teams that have 6'8 well. and 6'9, <laughs> so I would think that's probably a good idea. As you can see, looking for Jack Kanapke inside and you can see down there Austin Niekamp running the baseline, trying to get open. You'll see Hess here take the ball to the hole and get his first shot up, and it's blocked. 
Gets his own rebound. Kicks it out to Brandon Eichen. They're going to go ahead and reset things here, Mark. Yeah, very local can be very, very patient. Coach would like to get a run out on occasion, but if it's not there, they're going to look for the best shot they can get. And typically these days, you know, you, want to see, you see a lot of teams up-tempo, firing threes up. You don't see that out of Marion Local. They will take them when they're there, but it's not a helter-skelter situation. Nice move. Shot goes up by Anke, misses, and a rebound comes down to Jackson Quarter, and that sets up the uh, Redskin offense here. Zach Niekamp's going to be in control here, and he starts it off getting the ball in, outside here to Nate Metzger. Three-point shot goes up by Cash Shadel, misses that one, and the rebound's going to go to the Flyers. Comes down to Jack Knapke. Quickly gets it up to Ike. Now he's going to kick it out to Tate Hess. That, that right there is what I mean by Marion Local. They ran the ball down the floor. He did not have a good shot. Okay, let's bring it back and get into our sets. I think that's one of the things Coach Gutterbiller does very, very well. You know, you call this maybe retro basketball. You know, <laughs> the teams that take their time and are patient. And, you know, the old Hoosiers film where you, you have so many passes before they shot. It's kind of refreshing to see it, Mark. It really is. Here's, Mesher's their best three-point field goal shooter of the season. He gets a shot up there and misses, but it comes down to the Redskins and comes down to Jackson Quarter, who's really been kind of the key component here of this Redskin team. And they're off to, I wouldn't say a rough start, but they're getting better as the season goes on and trying to get into this Coach Elkert offense here that I know it's in his second season, uh, really trying to understand things and are making progressions here. See, they have everybody above the arc as they start their offense. It's Jackson Quarter. He's going to try to move it around. He gets it over to Nate Metzger. Metzger swings it down over to Cash Shadel. Shadel looking inside, trying to get something on the baseline. Great defense by Marion Local. Deacon Redder with the ball here on the wing. It's one thing that both of these teams hang their hat on. They are both solid defensive basketball teams. You can see Marion Local playing this man-to-man -man defense, doing a great job of rotating on their defense. And not allowing Walpock, and now they do get the, the offensive rebound, which is something that they're going to need to do tonight. And that's two offensive boards there. It was a miss by Zach Niekamp, but what a nice follow by Deacon Redder. That it was. Gives this came flashing down from the top of the circle. Somebody missed a check out. Here's the pass inside. Yeah, and that's what Marion Local wants to do. Jack Knapke gets it up, misses it, gets his own rebound. Great hustle inside. There's a miss by uh, Brandon Ank, but couple good looks there, and not what Wapak wants, those offensive rebounds. Yeah, they gave up offensive uh, rebound position. I thought Ike's shot was going to roll. Of course, I thought that the original shot by Niekamp was going to fall, but they just didn't, didn't go down for them. Wapak swinging the ball around. Niekamp gets it over to Cash Shadel. Back to Niekamp. He's going to drive the baseline. He's got a hand on it there. He gets the ball to Metzger. Metzger over to Shadel. Back to Metzger. They're going to reset things yeah, here, Mark. Coach Elker just called a play. Let's see what this ends up being. And I know a lot of teams have different sets. A lot of times you see the foul there early. They're going to call that one on Tate Hess. Looks like it's going to be his first foul tonight. But typically, coaches, do they do they change their sets based upon the defense that they see? Or, or how does that work, Coach? Well, you know, Coach, he's got his plan, and every plan has an option to it, or a couple of options to it, depending on how the defense is playing at that particular point in time. I heard a coach talk a few weeks ago about how they had hundreds of sets in their offense, and I thought, that can't be a good thing. You know, well, you played for a coach who had hundreds <laughs> of sets, <laughs> Coach Adams. <laughs> and by golly, you better, you do, better you know knew every, every one single of one of those sets, that's for sure. <laughs> Miss, and the rebound comes down here to Jake, Jake Messer. Of course, we it's, wish Coach the best at his retirement. Now the retires position from the athletic directorship at UNOH. Coach Adams was a great one. Not only a great uh, coach, but a great person as well. And we see Messer get the first uh, points there uh, for the Flyers. Good penetration dribble. When you're the best three-point shooter on the team, you get people close out to you, he's able to go around and score. And that makes it tied up at two here early. You know, we thought maybe there'd be a little bit more scoring, but we've seen a lot of good defense as Walpock's really trying to work inside to Redder here. He swings it across the court to Cash Shadle, and boy, he knocks down a triple. That he did. 19 of those on the season. Now he leads the team in three-point field goals. He has 19. Zach Decamp has 17 coming into tonight. They shoot a lot of threes and very well. 
That triple try is in and out for Austin Niekamp, and that still leaves the Redskins up 5-2 to two on the Charles River scoreboard here tonight. And kind of a surprising start for Marion Local to come out a little cold, but, uh, you know, I, I can see that they're playing hard and things are just kind of falling in and out, but we'll see how the game progresses. They won that Salina championship the other night, 64-60 over St. Henry. Knee can't misses, but Jackson Quarter comes down with an offensive rebound. And one of the things Walpock doing very well is attacking wow. the boards. And that Quarter be, gets that one to fall. That would be correct. Jackson Quarter, uh, two points there. And nice, uh, he's the leading scorer in this team, I believe. And playing a lot of minutes and doing a lot of good things here for the Redskins. Muscled up and went right through. 7-2 to two on the Charles River scoreboard. And coming here with a minute 50 left here in the first quarter, and that entry pass into Kanapke was just a little too far, but nice recovery, and Kanapke's gonna shoot a two. Shows a little bit of range here, and now we're gonna have a timeout by Walpaw here with 140 left here in the first quarter. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. It's the Redskins seven, the Marion Local Flyers five, here on WSN. Welcome back to Marion Local here in the first quarter. It's the Wapakoneta Red, Wapakone Redskins with a 7-4 lead over the Marion Local Fires. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Really good job by Kneecamp to defend quarter who took a back cut to the play that was designed coming out of the timeout. Kneecamp defended it well. See Cash Shadle with the ball looking for Quarter here, and Quarter's looking inside. He's going to try to take his defender one on one, and boy, uses the glass. And I didn't hear him call bank, Mark. <laughs> He's got 12 point average on the season. He's got four now here in the opening quarter. Well, and I like his athletic ability. Not only is he uh, uh, not afraid to take a jump shot, but he's aggressive on the offensive boards, getting those second chance opportunities. And that's probably what you want to see in the game plan for Marion Local, and that's Jack Kanapke yeah. getting an entry pass. And I'm going to bet that was the focus at the timeout. We're going to, he's, he's taking a shot from near the three-point line. Kneecamp is taking a shot from near there and outside of the arc. We're going to take the ball down inside this time. Kneecamp averages almost 15 a game. Well, he's very skilled, too. I know he took the three-point shot earlier, but very skilled inside, a very technical player. You can tell he's put a lot of time in the gym. And just a junior. Under 30 seconds to go here from Marion Local High School and Jackson Quarter getting the ball over to Zach Niekamp. Niekamp gets it to Nate Metzger, just kind of trying to get that last second shot here. Misses the shot, great rebound by Redder and he gets it to fall. And that gives the Redskins an 11 to six lead here on the Charles River scoreboard. Not sure that was the shot that Coach Elkert wanted. He wanted to run the clock down, but a good offensive rebound bails him out. And the hustle by Walpog, not only an offensive boards, but a steal here on the defensive end, and that'll conclude the first quarter. It's the Wapak Canada Redskins 11 and the Marion Local Flyers 6 after 1 right here on WOSN. Now, yeah, welcome back to Marion Local High School here tonight. Uh, for this non-league contest between Walpock and Red, Walpock and the Redskins and the Marion Local Flyers. Mark, we have an 11-6 lead by the Redskins after one. Two points for Jade Mesher, four for Jack Kanapke, four for Jackson Quarter, four for Deacon Redder, three for Cash Shadle, and that is the scoring. And the only foul in the opening quarter was by Tate Hess. Wapak did not commit a foul. I was going to say, what a clean first quarter. Yes, sir. And you can see two well-coached teams playing great defense, but hustling on both ends of the ball. Well, the thing I like about it is their defense is really, really solid, but they don't foul. They're not reaching in and slapping. They don't do a lot of, you know, trying to block shots where you come down across people's arms. They're solid defensive teams. Well, he can't, tries to take it inside, and Jack Kanapke says, I don't think so. But he didn't swat it out of bounds. He controlled it so his teammate could get the rebound. Good heads-up play by him. This is, cut. This is Austin Niekamp, swings it over to Hess. Hess gets it over now to Luke Pullman, who's entered the game. He gets the ball over to Brandon Eink. Eink trying to look inside, trying to get into this offensive set here. Kanapke over to Hess. Hess back to Ike, and they're going to reset things. Let's see if they get a downstream right here and get Kanapke or Kneecamp inside. 
And they're going to try the deep triple by Pullman. Pullman really? misses, and nice rebound there by Nate Metzger. A really good job of checking out inside that time. Only red shirts around the glass. Walpock's been impressive. They, they're a scrappy team. I mean, it's one of the things that we're seeing is they're playing hard, they're playing scrappy, um, and, and that is what is keeping them, have, yep. allowing them to have this five-point lead. Redder with the ball on the wing. He's looking inside. He kicks it inside to Nate Metzger. Metzger's going to take the ball to the hole, and he looks like he's going to dribble off his foot. And Paul Wingowich is checking with Clay Ehrman, and they're going to say it's Marion Local's ball. Well, if you were a little bit older, John, you would know a guy <laughs> named Johnny Orr who coached at the University of Michigan. That's his offense they're running right there. Okay. A little high post stuff, rub, a rub off on one side, a chance to go one-on-one. -on -one. He made a star out of Phil Hubbard doing that. That was a little before Boy. my time. Not much, but a little. It's always interesting. I find this with football. Coaches, they, they get coaches that they like, and then you see them install their systems within their teams. Kanapke was looking inside there for Aiden Eifert and just missed him committing another yeah. turnover for Mary Local. That was one of those that the, the pass was so difficult, even if he would have caught it, he would have been in a position where he couldn't have used it. And Coach Gunnabill did a little bit of coaching just today. That wasn't the pass we needed right there. You know, this Marion Local team, we talked about it a little bit before, they, they basically don't scrimmage. I mean, they start their season. I, you know, the first game was uh, sometime in mid-December, and we're going to get a foul here as uh, Zach Niekamp is taking the ball to the hole here. Looks like they're going to call that foul there on Jaden Mesher. It's going to take Niekamp to the foul line. But you know, what I was saying was they, they start so late. Everybody else is starting at the end of November, and there's no scrimmage. There's no ramp-up time. It's just, boom, you're playing games right away. Yeah, and, you know, you, you think of all the things you have to do. you got to pass out uniforms. You know, you got to. <laughs> you got to have a press meeting with, you know, you, there's so many things you got to do that people don't think about. Hey, we got to put together a contact list so we know who contacts who on a day it right. snows. It, right. There's so many little things that you have to do in such a short time period that it, it, and it will obviously get the basketball skills put together too. Knee camp hits a second foul shot. That's going to give the Redskins a nice 12 or 13 to 6 lead here on the Charles River scoreboard. Aiden Eifert kicks it over to Luke Pullman. Back, Mesher takes a deep triple. Nice rebound by Eifert, but rejected. Knapke kicks it out, and there it is. Finally, Jade Mesher hits the three-point shot he's been looking for. How many times do you see that? Everybody collapses to the basket to a uh, to, uh, defensive rebound, and you leave a three-point shooter open on the, on the free throw or the arc line. That's one of the things I think as a coach is you teach your kids and preach to them to crash the boards, but then when you have something like that happen, you know, it's hard to explain that to kids, that's for sure. Good penetration dribble right there. Jackson Quarter, he's going to draw the foul here. He's going to go to the free throw line, and they're yeah. going to call that one on. Looks like they're going to call that one on Tate Hess. That's his second for tonight, Mark. Yeah, they only have three team fouls, and he's got two of them. So far, Walpock has not fouled. Um, playing a lot of hustle, a lot of solid defense, and Quarter's going to hit his first of two. He is a 68% free throw shooter on the season. One of those hockey line changes for Coach Guttermiller. Brings in three guys. Try to keep people fresh. His assistant coaches on the sideline do a little coaching. Quarter misses the second, and rebound comes down to Eink. Typically, when they bring in that many different guys, and you can see that even, even the sizes changes, is that because they want to do something different offensively, well, Coach? Or? Sometimes it's it's that. Sometimes it's a fatigue situation. Sometimes it's getting the, the right group of players on the floor to match up with your opponent. There's a lot of different reasons you might go about doing nice hands right there to knock it out of bounds. Yeah, Jackson Quarter playing heads-up defense and a lot of aggressiveness and knocks it out of Brandon Eink's hands here. But Marion Local now going to inbound the ball. And like I said, much, a much smaller lineup. Obviously, you bring out 6'8 and 6'9, you're not going to replace that. But Well, they've got Kneecamp back in the game, but he's not the same physical presence that Kanapke is. He's right. more of a lengthy player than he is the, the solid player inside. Nice move. Yeah, nice ball fake. Missed shot by Aiden Eifert, but a nice ball fake and a nice open shot there, and it's a good rebound by Nate Metzger. Crashing the boards, and this is Zach Kneecamp. Controlling the point, gets it over to Metzger. Metzger looking inside to Redder. Redder is going to take it inside, and no call. No call there, but Redder misses the bunny. And it's going to be a nice rebound there by Luke Pullman. Pullman over to Eifert. Eifert over to Eink. Eink driving baseline. Great defense by Jackson Quarter. 
I think that was one of those where both coaches wanted a call and neither one got one. <laughs> I kind of like that when uh, it looked clean. I mean, it did look clean. Looking inside here is knee camp. Knee camp now is going to fall the first foul from Walpock, and that looks like it's going to be number 14, Jackson Quarter, his first. If you look at the history of this game, the last six times they have played, the visitors have won five of them. Very local one in this gym back in 2020. The other five games out of the last six played have been won by the visiting team. A little bit of an unusual stat. Very unusual because, I, I, you know, I've just been in this gym a lot over the years. And this is a tough place to win. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you know typically the new schools, you see the kind yeah. of cookie cutter, cool gyms. This gym is older, and it's about 89 degrees in here, which makes it difficult to play in here, Mark. Really nice job defensively. Shove them baseline with nowhere to go, and the ball goes out of bounds. That is correct. It's one of those gyms, the older gyms, you set right on top of the court. There's a little end line down here where the student section typically gathers, and, and you get the young kids in there. It's, it's one of my favorite places to come. And not only that, you come down, you got knowledgeable fans. you got a great AD in Dan Koenig who puts everything together. This is one of my favorite places to come. And Dan asked me the other night or tonight when I walked in the gym if I was going to let her this year because I've been here so many <laughs> times between football and basketball. But I might have my mail delivered here. That would be easier, but I really like coming down here. Yeah, Dan Koenig, I would agree. I'd echo those thoughts. One of the best ADs uh, around, High no low. doubt. Boy, they're wrestling down inside big time. Kanapke's doubled up. Yeah. Kanapke kicks it out to Neekamp. Neekamp's now going to take it to the hole, and this ball's going to fall in. And you can see now that yep. Marion Local is making a, a concerted effort to try to get it to these two guys, especially inside. And now that cuts the lead to 14-11. Walpock still holding on to the lead on the Charles River scoreboard. Austin Niekamp coming off a 17-point game and a win over St. Henry, his best offensive game of the season. He's getting more and more confidence every time we see him. And Jackson Quarter gets it over to De Deacon Redder. Redder, Zach Niekamp. Just kind of swinging the ball around. Quarter trying to go off to the, the screen there. Yeah, they had that played well that time, and Quarter went the other way. Well, he's athletic. He can get to the hole, and he goes high and gets those two points, and that pushes the lead now to 16 to 11. He's got seven now. Well, you can kind of see that Walpock, everything kind of flows through Jackson Quarter. Marion Loco, Pullman kicks it over to Kanapke, Kanapke on the baseline, swings it all the way over to Braden Ike, and he takes it the whole misses, but Kanapke's there and puts it in. Such a physical presence inside. He is so strong. He, I think he was kind of tied up and couldn't get off the floor very well and still muscled it up. Bringing the ball up is number 10, Caleb Moyer, a freshman. We've seen him on the football field. Did a great job of uh, quarterbacking the football team. And now we're going to have a timeout for Walpock, and we're going to take a timeout here right now. 16 to 13. Walpock's holding a slim lead on the Charles River scoreboard. We'll be back in just a few minutes here on WSN. We're back here in the second quarter at Marion Local. It's Walpock 16. Marion Local 13 on the Charles River scoreboard. I'm very impressed, uh, Mark, with Wapak's uh, aggressiveness tonight and trying to attack the, the rim. That they are. They're trying to get inside. They've done a good job of getting some offensive rebounds as well to go along with that. It's been a good half so far. We'll see how the last two minutes go. Nate Metzger with the ball at the top. He looking inside. He gets it the quarter, quarter at the free throw line. Spins. He's going to take it inside. Nice move inside. He's going to get a foul. They're going to get Austin Niekamp on that foul, and Marion Local Faithful wasn't sure about that one. Well, he had his hands straight up in the air. The foul was not there. It was a body low. Down low was the call. First foul on Niekamp. Quarters did a nice job of uh, being aggressive, taking the ball to the hole, and getting himself to the free throw line. That he has. The second pair of free throws. That's point eight for him. Yeah. Makes one of two. Going to get a second opportunity here. It's a little long on that one, and there's a nice rebound there by Brandon Ike. He's going to bring it up himself. Ike gets it over to Tate Hess. Hess playing with two fouls right now. Kicks it over to Mesher. Mesher kicks it over to Niekamp. Niekamp back to Ike. Over to Niekamp. Looking inside, trying to get the ball to Kanapke, and they're doing a great job of double teaming 
well, denying that entry pass. Yeah, they're trying to play in front and in back and drop in the backside, help down inside. There's a good lob. Yeah, great pass. Yep. Great pass by Tate Hess. He's thrown well, plenty of great passes in his career, but that's a great pass. Get a nice assist to Jack Knappy. It's hard to bring help when the ball's in the middle of the floor. There's not a help side established defensively, and so there wasn't a help over the top that time. Quarter looking inside for Redder. Doesn't go there, so he swings it around. It's a back cut there by Zach Niekamp. Kicks it back out. Going to try a triple here, a long triple. What a nice rebound there by Nate Metzger. Yeah, Coach Elker just said, I want last shot of this quarter. He wants to go into halftime with a lead. You know the happiest guy the gym is right now? Deacon Redderer, <laughs> because the three ball that Cash Shadle made, they gave to him. Oh, boy. Yeah, give me a 3-2 when <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm 6-7. <six>, <laughs> nice Metzger. back cut. No. Oh. Wow, what a pass Whoa. by Moyer to Redderer. And Jack Kanapke says, I don't think so. And that will give Marion Local this opportunity here going into the end of the half here, Hess. All the officials wearing red shirts. He did, do, he did double dribble. He set it on the floor and then picked it up again. All the officials wearing red shirts were sure there was a, a, a <laughs> goaltending. I didn't know that Kanapke could get up that way. That's He really got off the floor yeah, that he did. time. But, you know, I think what he did was he, you know, typically, you know, you see guys swat down. Yeah, he, he went straight up. He, he you know? is very good at that. Instead of hammering it out of bounds, he controls it to a teammate. His second block, he's done it both that way this evening. Oh, Paul Wingowitz called double dribble there yeah. on Tate Hess, and I think what he did was he picked up his dribble, looked over at Coach, and then started dribbling again. Set the ball back down on the floor again. Quarter going to take the last maybe shot for the quarter here. If Neat Camp comes down with the ball, and we got about two seconds to go. Ike's going to take a shot here, and he doesn't fall for him on the Charles River scoreboard. But that's going to take us to halftime right now. It's the Wapak and the Redskins holding a slim lead at halftime. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. At 17-15, Marion Local down to the Wapak and the Redskins here on WOSN. And welcome back to Marion Local as the Wapak and the Redskins hold a two-point advantage over the Marion Local Flyers. 17 to 15 on the Charles River scoreboard. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. It's the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. And they're also hiring. You can visit jobs.criver.com to apply. Today, Mark, we've seen an interesting first half. How are the keys uh, held up for the first half so far? Well, you know, I think the game has been so closely played that I think both coaches are kind of on script right now. If you look at what Marion Local has done, Jaden Mesher has five, including a three-point field goal. Austin Niekamp, two. Jack Kanapke's got eight, four in each quarter, and I think they're going to keep trying to go down inside to Jack as the game progresses along. On the other side, Jackson Quarter has eight, four for Deacon Redderer, three for Cash Shadle on a three-point field goal and Zach Niekamp has two. Each team's made a three-point field goal. I think uh, Marion Locals did a good job of taking threes away from the Wapak and the Redskins, but the Redskins have really fought for a lot of offensive rebounds and got some putbacks and scores. Nobody's in foul trouble. Tate has, has two. That's as close as anybody has to be in foul trouble, so we're set for a good half. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, you would know more about this than I would, but I don't think there needs to be any big adjustments uh, by either team. I would agree with that. Yeah, I think both teams are pretty much on point. There haven't been a lot of turnovers, haven't been a lot of, of things you want to go in and say, hey, we got to do this a whole lot better. Um, just, just let's play our game. Kanapke will start out here with the ball. He'll get the ball to Ink. Brandon Ink, he'll kick it over there to Austin Ekamp, who's now back to Tate Hess. Well, did a good job. Mesher really wants to get those threes up. He is the leading three-point field goal shooter. Jack Kanapke does a nice job of getting position, get a great entry pass, and he puts it in for two. Yeah, he couldn't get down and help off him because if you help, you're helping off a of Mesher and leave him open for a three. So they got him inside without help at that time. Scheming up a little offense there. Now Walpock with Nate Metzger kicking it over to Cash Shadle. Shadle in the corner to Zach Niekamp. Niekamp looking inside, trying to get it back to Metzger. He's going to kick it out to... Jackson Quarter, and they're going to reset the offense here. Quarter gets it over to Niekamp. Niekamp looking inside for Deacon Redder, who's flashing across the paint. Cascado drives, nice kick pass. Reverse layup missed by Metzger, but nice offensive rebound once again for the Redskins. Yeah, they got a 50-50 ball again. Good hustle that time. Metzger looking inside to Redder, and they... Unfortunately, create the turnover, and 
again, the hustle on the offensive boards, I guess if one of the things before the game you told me that Walpock would be, uh, I wouldn't say yeah. dominating, but aggressive on the boards, I'd be shocked. Yeah, you would have thought that there would have been very few offensive rebound opportunities for the uh, Walpock and the Redskins, but they have hustled their way into a bunch of them. Tate Hess gets it over to Jaden Mesher. Mesher kicks it out to Neekamp, and boy, he's going to bury the triple. Austin Neekamp. He loaded that one up in a hurry. 6'8", sophomore, shooting threes. That's tough to defend. And here's the Flyers ahead for the first time. Marion Local takes their first lead on the Charles River scoreboard, 20-17. to 17. Close to six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Jackson Quarter is going to get a traveling call. Official said he changed pivot feet when he made his spin move. You know, I think traveling, and, and you would know more about this than I would, Mark, <laughs> but I, I feel like they've become a little bit more liberal with the traveling maybe than what they were 20 years ago. Can yeah, you speak to that? Yeah, well, the Euro step is a travel. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. If you do it correctly, it's not. The problem is some guy, oh, nice play. That's Hess a great just play. Hustled into his first basket. Yeah, Tate Hess there, 6'2", senior, does a nice job of getting inside and making the point. Flyers have made a statement coming out after the half. Put the first seven points on the board. Well, I was going to say, according to YouTube and all of the young kids, the Eurostep is not a travel mark. Well, if it's so. not, if you do it right. The problem <laughs> is we got a lot of kids can't do it right, and it mm -hmm. should be called a travel. Jackson Quarter gets it over to Zach Neekamp. Neekamp at the top. Looking inside, kicks it over there to Cash Shadel. Shadel looking for a flashing Dylan Redder, and looks like they're going to turn the ball over here. Yeah, Coach Elker just grabbed his head that time. That was kind of an unforced turnover, and... Things are starting to get away from a little bit here in quarter number three. You know, Marion Locals played aggressive defense the entire game, but now yep. with this five-point lead, you, you can kind of feel Walpock tighten, starting to tighten up a little bit. Knee camp over to Mesher. Mesher kicks it over to Brandon Ink. Ink back to knee camp looking for Knapke. Boy, that's pretty. Oh, that high-low pass was outstanding, and then the reverse layup inside. They took the ball from side to side, then went right to the high post area where he was able to seal and get a good pass down inside. And here's a timeout. Yeah, you're going to get a big lead now, a pushing lead here. Going from down by two at the first half, now to a seven point lead for the Marion Local Flyers. We're going to go ahead and take a break here on WSN. Welcome back to Marion Local. We're at the hangar tonight on a Tuesday evening. Non-league action between the Walpock and the Redskins and the Marion Local Flyers. It's the Flyers holding on to a 24-17 lead. Didn't actually end up taking the lead till here just a few minutes ago in the third quarter. Walpock's going to inbound the ball. It's 9-0 Flyers here in the first three minutes of quarter three. Hence the timeout. That's the third timeout. Two, only two remaining now for Coach Elkert. Zach Niekamp. On the wing, trying to look inside for Jackson Quarter. He's being guarded heavily by Austin. He can't doing a great job. And Nate Metzger's going to get the ball there, but they're going to get a, looks like a blocking foul. Clay Ehrman's going to get Jack Knappy for a blocking foul. Tried to go back cut that time with the defensive pressure being so severe on the perimeter. Deacon Redderer. Top of the key, getting the ball back to Zach Niekamp. Niekamp's going to take a deep triple. A little bit short and a nice rebound. But Jaden Mesher, Mesher gets it over to Tate Hess. I don't think that was intended for Jack Knapke, but he gets it to Brandon Ank. Ank taking the ball to the hole. Nice pass inside. And we almost had a dunk there, Mark. Yes, yeah, we almost <laughs> did. One of those high percentage shots. Nate Mesker gets his first foul. Team's first to the half. I watched Coach Guttemore the last time out, and he was really challenging his guys. They don't score, and he repeated it multiple times, and you know, they're almost uh, four minutes into this one. Let's see how long they can keep that uh, shutout going this quarter. Nice inside pass to Brandon Eink, and Way gets it the ball. Really good. Give and go cut. They are really rolling right now, are the Flyers. They push that lead on the Charles River scoreboard to 9, 26 to 17 with about four minutes to go. Here in the third quarter, Zach Niekamp, he's going yeah. to get a charge call. Really good call. Stuck an elbow out and got away with uh, Well, I thought he got away with it, but he didn't. And... Well, and that's where, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if the, if the frustration is starting yeah. to mount because early 
you know, Marion Luckle struggled to score, so Walpaw could keep the game close, although the, the defense was aggressive, and now Marion Local getting a lot of those baskets, and Walpaw feeling that pressure to score and get this game uh, back. Well, you know, you look at Walpaw Canetta, and they're three and six on the season, and things are starting to get away from them here a little bit. They get a little bit frustrated, and they just need to settle down and get back to what they were doing in the opening half. Austin Niekamp oh. kicks it over to Hess, back to Niekamp. Hess looking inside of Kanabi. Yeah. They're going to get Deacon Redderer with a foul. He finally got Redderer behind him, and there was nothing to do that Deacon could do but foul him that time, or he's going to get the ball down inside deep and score. Really posted up hard that time, did a good job of entry pass as well. Hess gets it over to Kanapke. Kanapke to Mesher. Mesher back to Eink. Eink to Hess. Gets it over to Mesher. Great ball movement Got by the Flyers. Again. We're going to get a foul. Jack Knappi's going to go back to the foul line. Well, Nate Metzger got caught in a switch that time, and he ended up with him inside. So Metzger battled as much as he could, but he's listed at 6-1, so he's given up eight inches and a lot of pounds as well. Did they give that foul to quarter, I guess, his second? Knappi misses his first of two, but... You know, one of the things I notice about Jack Kanapke is he's so comfortable in that post position. Yeah. And that takes a lot of coaching. That it takes does. a lot of time yeah. and skill. That, that's not something that just comes natural. We saw him play last week against Austin Parks from, from St. Mary's. He got better as the game went along in every single thing he did. I think he's a real good learner. And those are the first two free throws shot in a basketball game by Marion Local. They're one for two now. Kanapke makes one of two. Pushes it now to a 10-point lead on the Charles River scoreboard. I think Coach uh, likes to get him a break about halfway through each quarter. And because of the size differential, Deacon Redder is going to get his first break in the second half as well. Deacon Redder has played really a great game. I he's think been he's played well, and, yeah. yeah. Doing a great job on the back defensive cut. end. Back cut, there you go. Yeah, what a nice back cut by Zach, or excuse me, Nate Metzger. Getting points on the scoreboard, now cutting that lead back to eight. Nate Metzger's first basket of the night. That was a really well done back cut. Austin Niekamp, top of the key, kicks it over to Luke Pullman. Pullman gets it over to Tate Hess. Hess. See, Niekamp was in the post now, but he also vacates it so they can go with five out sometimes. Niekamp kicks it out. Kyle Ungren with the ball. Over to back to Hess. Marion Local being extremely patient. Working the ball from side to side. Knee camp now on the post. Yeah, he slashes in there occasionally. It doesn't, it doesn't set up a box position. Now Coach Gutterman is going to get a timeout. Another timeout here. We'll take another timeout as well. 27-19 on the Charles River scoreboard. Marion Local on top of Walpaw Canetta on WOSN. Welcome back to Marion Local High School, where the Marion Local Flyers hold a 27-19 lead over the Walpaw Canada Redskins. TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation at any size as a way to show, say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit us at WTLW.com. Mark, 27-19. You know, that was like one of the, the really, really good timeouts because he got Kanapke back in the game. So he got about a minute clock break, plus he got the minute timeout break. Um, that, that was a really good situation for Coach. Now he got him back in the game after resting, too. Marion Local holding the eight-point lead, moving the ball patiently. <laughs> and Jade Messer is going to shoot from downtown, and he's going to score. And that'll push the lead to 11. Yeah, Metzger is their leading three-point shooter on the season. He's had the 15 before tonight. He's got a couple tonight. He has been their three-point threat. Nate Metzger, nice pump fake. He's inside. He's not going to go up against Kanapke in the post, giving up some size. But How about the footwork by Kanapke, though? <clears throat> Shut off his move to the goal. And Zach Niekamp, fadeaway jump shot from the baseline. He's got four in the game now. Seeing some really good things from Zach Niekamp, Nate Metzger, Jackson Quarter. And Walpaw not subbing a lot tonight, but really the guys on the court doing a great job. 
Luke Pullman thought about it for a minute, but then he kicked it back out to Tate Hess, and that shows the patience of this Flyer offense by making sure that they take good shots. Kyle Ungren kicks it over. Jaden Mesher, Mesher, now to Kanapke. And he's going to take the ball, and we're going to get a charge. It's tough when you're six foot nine yeah. and you're driving, and it's really easy to step in front of him. And anything after that, it's going to well, be a tough call. You know what's tough? You're willing to stick your body in and let that guy run you <laughs> over, too, with a head of steam. This is the kind you get in the whirlpool after the game's <laughs> over. Zach Niekamp did a good job of taking that charge, and now he'll bring the ball up the floor. And nice job by Luke Pullman denying that entry pass. Under a minute to go here at Marion Local High School. Here at the Hangar on a Tuesday. Mark Shine and John Zerby here. What a great back cut by Deacon Redderer. Excuse me, Cash Shadle. Did a nice job. Overplay on the wing pass. That's twice they've done it. Got a well done bounce pass for a score here in the quarter. And that puts us under a minute with about 30 seconds to go here. Marion Local working it inside here. Aiden Eifert kicks it out. Jaden Mesher, Mesher now in the corner. Pullman, Pullman to Kanapke. Back to Mesher, knee camp. Jackson Quarter playing aggressive, smothering defense. That's good, 6-1 and he is doing everything he can to keep the ball out of Kanapke's hands. Pullman gonna look for Mesher here. Mesher gonna take the deep three and drills it. Wow. Jaden Mesher starting to light it up, and Jackson Porter tries to get it in here, but not enough. And after three here at the hangar at Marion Local, it's the Marion Local Flyers 33 in the Walpong Connect Redskins 23 here on WOSN. And we're back here at Marion Local. It's the Wapak County Redskins, 23. Down to the Marion Local Flyers, who have 33 on the scoreboard. A nice 10-point lead there. And Mark, we've seen a big transition from the first what half where Wapak went into the lead, went into halftime with the lead. 18 to tw six quarter that time for the Marion Local Flyers. You know, the average is 48 on the season, but they put 18 up in that quarter alone. And they did it inside with Jack Kanapke. They did it from the three-point line. They had a really good quarter. Deep three from Zach Niekamp comes down with a rebound from Jaden Mesher. He's going to kick it over to Mesher. Mesher back to Tate Hess. Hess looking inside. He gets it into Niekamp. Niekamp misses. Rebound from Nate Metzger. Metzger kicks it up to Zach Niekamp. We've got a no call here, but now we got a foul on the defensive end. You know, you just don't see runouts against Marion Local. Now, if they get a steal, perhaps on a wing pass, but they get back so quickly against missed shot opportunities, their their defensive position is very good. You can see Wapak only scoring as of right now 23 points. You can see the hustle and the aggressiveness of this Marion Local Flyer defense. Wapak said, "Here's a little half-court trap." Walpuck's had quarter scores of 11, 6, and 6. So the defense just got better and better. Nice pass. Tate Hess, great pass to Austin Niekamp and puts it in for two. Uh, and now that pushes the lead Tate as well. you think Tate Hess threw any passes last <laughs> fall like that? <laughs> he led him pretty well. He it's, really did. Seems like he's done that a time or two. What do they in call his life? that? Throwing him open? Is that <laughs> That's what you right. football guys call it? <laughs> I think he was open regardless. Well, so. <laughs> but they saw that little half court trap and he recognized it, okay. threw the ball over the top and. Niekamp had enough smarts to go to the goal, too, when he saw the opening. Don't done on both sides. Yeah, half-court trap, is that just to try to create a turnover? Yeah, he had to try to do something different. They were running very comfortably against his man-to-man -man that quarter and had to try something different. Here's a nice move. Yeah, Ryan Sadler getting in the game, making a nice pump fake and getting in there for two, and that's Sadler's first points of the game. Then coach put him back in the man. But they're back into their base defense here. Marion Local still working it inside. Knapke likes that reverse layup. He's very good at it, isn't he? Got position and went baseline for the reverse layup. The entry pass was outstanding, too. You can tell they spent a lot of time on that. How to position, how to put the ball into his hands. Metzger looking inside. Turnover there by Jaden Mesher. Kicks it up. Tate Hess misses the 
layup. Battling underneath, and it looks like Sadler's going to be called out of bounds, but nice hustle underneath, and Marion Local's going to keep the possession. One of the things I liked was the 6'8", Austin Niekamp ran the floor that time to help get into the offensive rebound area. Well, we've seen him do a lot of different he's things. Done nice, he's had a nice night for the sophomore. You know, he played a lot of JV as a freshman, not because of skill level, but because of physical strength and mm -hmm. endurance, and he's a lot better. There he is there, misses a shot, but gets his own rebounding in the paint and gets it to fall. That will push the lead to 14 on the Charles River scoreboard. You know, he was averaging just six points a game going into that tournament last weekend. They played in at, at uh, Coldwater. He's had, yeah, the final game he had 17. He's got nine tonight with most of the quarter to go. He's really coming on as Austin Niekamp. And it's hard to believe, Mark, and we talked about it a little bit in the first half, but, you know, Marion Luke was really in about their third week of playing basketball. Well, I mean, they're only going to get better and improve and that as is the season goes on. true. Jackson Quarter kicks it over. Zach Niekamp. Niekamp looking for Deacon Redder. Niekamp misses the shot. Rebound by Kanapke, and now you see Marion Luke on the run a little bit. Kicks it back to Tate Hess. Hess going to drive the lane, takes it to the hole, and he gets it. Passed up the perimeter jump shot to go to the rim. He did the same thing back in the second, in the third quarter. Tate Hess doing a nice job. He scored four points tonight. That's going to push the lead down to 16 for the Flyers. You know who's really happy for Marion Local playing 10 games in the month of January? <laughs> Players. <laughs> we don't have to practice. We just get to play. Get to play games every <laughs> yeah. night of the week. That was a nice move. <laughs> Great move by Zach Niekamp. And he's been aggressive. I, I yeah. give a lot of uh, six-foot... Uh, guard, junior Zach Niekamp has been aggressive, played a lot of minutes tonight. Averaging 13 a game, he's got six tonight. Here's his little zone action. Inside of Kanapke, Kanapke looking for Hess inside, kicks it back out. Kanapke going to take it inside and nice move. You know, the coaches call that repost. Throw it inside, draw the people to you, kick out, bring it right back inside and go to work. He did that very well that time. Makes it almost impossible for a defense to cover that when you're moving the ball that quickly. Kneecamp going to take a deep triple. Misses this one. Rebound's going to come down to Tate Hess after the tip. Hess gets it over to Aiden Eifert. Eifert back to Hess. Looking inside, they're just trying to get the ball to Kanapke. Jackson Porter tried to get over and help, but we're going to go ahead and get a timeout by the Wapak Canetta Redskins. We're going to keep this time out here, Mark, and this is an opportunity to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight. It's presented by Charles River in Spencerville. It's premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. And they're hiring this time, too. If you look for a job, you can visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. That is Charles River in Spencerville. Mark, got a lot of games coming up yeah. here in the next few weeks. What do we have on tap here uh, coming up in the next few weeks and even this week? Well, the, the, you know, the WSN, we got a, a Thursday night girls game this week. That's a really good matchup. Ottawa Glendor is going to play St. Mary's. That's a good game. And then our Friday night games, we got uh, Shawnee's going to Defiance. Shawnee's surprised a little bit this year how well they're playing. Defiance with just a single loss. And the other game on Friday night, the other huge game on Friday night, is Ottawa Glendor hosting St. Mary's, and that, that's going to be a huge battle as, as those two teams are picked to be at the top of the conference. That's a really, really big situation there. You know, if you look at Wapak's schedule, they got a Van Wert Friday, they got uh, Shawnee uh, the following Friday away, and then Coach Elkert gets to play against his dad. <laughs> Scott Elkert coaches yep. Jackson Center, and they're going to play at Jackson Center. I think it's at Shawnee on, or at uh, Wapak on the 14th. Last year's son got dad 48 38, so. Uh, I bet well, Dad will be a little bit chomping at the bit on that one. I was going to say, I don't know how Christmas went uh, this yeah. year after that, but uh, Scott Elkert been a great oh. coach and AD. Worked with him for a lot of years at Jackson Center. Uh, no finer than Scott Elkert, that's for sure. Triple try by Cash Shadle is a nice offensive rebound by the Redskins. Deacon Redder just really crashing the boards, doing a great job, gets it out to quarter. They've done a nice job with quarter in the second half. He has just eight points, all of them in the opening half. And see right there, now they fouled him that time, but he was smothered as he tried to get inside. Looking at Mary Local, they go to New Knoxville this Friday for a MAC game. Then they have a very talented Van Wert team in here on Saturday. 
on January 13th. We'll be back here. They will host the New Bremen Cardinals and Mark Miller, Jerry Snodgrass, and I in our annual attempt to get together and baffle the world with our sports <laughs> knowledge. And uh, it's one of my favorite weekends of the year. And we're going to be here that night, all three of us. Got snowed out in our effort to do it a year ago, so hopefully the weather doesn't interfere with that this year. And get a chance to see Mark and Jerry and do a game together on the 13th. That will be New Bremen here against this very local team. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, as a fan, it's fun to watch that game because, yeah. you know, I have fond memories of watching Mark Miller and Mike Schiff, uh, you know, in the early days of TV44. And, you know, Jerry Snodgrass, you know, worked with him a lot when he was commissioner of the OHSAA. So what an awesome time. What a really good game you'll have as well here in a few weeks. Right on WSN. And, and that will be a good game. That's a game that's going to have a lot to say and who wins the MAC this year, too. So it's not just a, a, a game where the three of us get to enjoy being together, but it's also a very good game to put it on WSN that week. Good pass. Great pass inside the brain. Braden Ink. Ink looking inside. But you know what? The help defense was as good as the pass. <laughs> good job defensively, Wapak. Nate Metzger kicks it out. Going to be tipped by Marion Local, but it's going to stay with the Redskins. Yeah, Aiden Eifert got a hand on that one, tipped it out of bounds. Some subs coming into the game. This will be Holman. And yeah, this is the first time we're starting to see some subs. Austin Niekamp getting a break, but you're going to see Mitchell Ranley getting an opportunity. Ryan Holman. Jaden Mesher is going to get a break, too. And you might want to, you might start to see Coach Gunn Miller kind of clear his bench and get some of these younger yeah. guys in. That he is. We also see Logan Crow is in the basketball game, as in Logan Healy for Coach Elkert. And I think Jordan Snyder is in the game as well, as he's gone to his bench some. And, you know, Walpock's really played six to seven guys. So, you know, those those, those guys that have been out there played a heck of a game, did a nice job. At, and now we're getting some younger guys getting the opportunity to, to play here. It's been a triple header night. Very local won the freshman game, won the JV game. The JV score was 49-25, and Flyers looking to make a three spot tonight. Caleb Moyer with the ball underneath. He's going to get a nice pass inside to Ryan Sadler. Sadler misses, and now they're going to Paul Wingowich is going to say that it's Walpaw Cadetta's basketball. Looks like it went off the hands of Mitchell Ranley for the Flyers. 80s like that triple header because you know, you got one set up, you got one ticket taker, you got one concession stand. And it's kind of nice for uh, the fans to see everybody play as you well. You know, as a basketball fan, I like it as well. It's a nice looking shot there by Logan Healy getting on the scoreboard, and that'll push the uh, game now to 45 to 29, Marion Local. And, and what a, a great situation for your freshmen to play in this facility and with a crowd. Uh, something that will just enhance their development skills. And, you know, typically the freshman teams are kind of removed from the JV and the yeah. varsity. They don't always practice together. That's a really a great time to bring your whole program together. You know, like you said, everybody to play in front of the home crowd in the home gym. I, I, I think it's a neat thing. Now, it's a busy night. It's a long night, but I think it's good for the school and good for the kids. Well, here's the other, the other part of that, too. You talk about development of young players to have an opportunity to play in that particular situation. But... Here's we get a basket inside that time Mitchell by Ranley uh, Mitchell there. Ranley. Thank you. Um, the, you know, the other part of, of that uh, the development uh, situation is, you know, being here in a crowd in front of everybody. But congratulations to both these teams who have freshman teams. Yes, exactly. A lot of schools today have trouble putting a full JV team That's together. Right. And these people have enough uh, athletes out for basketball. They can have freshman JV and varsity. Kayla Moyer with the nice footwork and ball skills. He kicks it out to Logan Crow, tries the triple. That hit a pop up top. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be out of bounds, but <laughs> it fell, but it just didn't count, Mark. Yeah. I think you should let him do that. <laughs> if, you can, if you can score off the top of that wire up there, why not? I yeah. mean, you know, that takes some skill to do that, that does, or some, yeah. some massive luck. Mitchell Ranley, he kicks the ball over to Kyle Otte. Otte with the ball. Let's see if they play it out now or if we're going to be done with this one. Just a few minutes here, under eight seconds. We're going to be looking at our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award coming up here in the post game. But this game's going to finish out on the Charles River scoreboard. It's the Marion Local Flyers 47, the Walpaw Canada Redskins 29. Stay tuned for a post game show right here on WOSN.
Back here at Marion Local, where the Flyers are the winners of tonight's game, 47 to 29 over the Walpaw Canetta Redskins. Our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award tonight. You can check out the WSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner. It's Austin Ecamp, number 23 for the Marion Local Flyers. He's a 6'8 sophomore. Played an outstanding game tonight, Mark. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, we look at his nine points on the board. He's got this, uh, three baskets inside the key, right around the basket area, and made a three-point field goal. And, and he's very active defensively, long arms. He's out in the passing lane a lot. He's around the rim a lot defensively. But he's really improving. And I thought that that was as much of any reason to give it to him this evening is the improvement as he's made from last year, this year, and even from the beginning of this year to tonight. He is going to be a force as the season goes along. We're going to go with Austin Niekamp tonight. Yeah, improving just like the Marion Local basketball team. And a lot to say, a good things about to say about Marion Local tonight, but also a lot of good things to say about Walpaw as well. Yeah, they did. They, they had trouble scoring the basketball, particularly in the last three quarters. They had opening quarter of 11 and then quarters of 6, 6, and 6 for their 29 tonight. They did not have a double-figure score. Jackson Quarter got to 8, but that was mostly because of the, the really good defense. But they learned something. How many backdoor cuts did they get? How many times did they scramble for offensive rebounds, particularly early in the basketball game? So there's th some things that coach can look at and say, yes, we're getting better at. Marion Local, some stats for them, oh Mark. Yeah, how about them? Kanapke with 19 tonight. Jaden Mesher with 11, including three three-point field goals. We mentioned Austin Niekamp with nine. Really good offensive uh, quarterbacking position from Tate Hess. Then they got a lot of defense from a lot of other guys. Their quarter scores tonight were 6-9. And then the second half, third quarter was 18. Fourth quarter was 14. You know, they really came together in the second half and played extremely well. And they are going to be a force in the MAC as the season goes along. Thank you for joining us tonight. Final here from Marion Local High School. Marion Local Flyers 47, Walpaw Canetta Redskins 29. Our next game will be Ottawa Glendorf taking on the St. Mary's Lady Rough Riders in girls basketball action. That'll be a Thursday night game. We'll retelecast that on Friday evening. We want to thank our help tonight as well. Jacob O'Neill running the, uh, the camera. Kelsey Beimer helping us out as well. And then back in the studio, Megan Sherrick helping us out. For Mark Shine, this is John Zerby saying so long, everyone.